The Reserve Bank has seized the assets of Marcus Euster, the disgraced former Steinhoff CEO. It's a move that has been widely welcomed by those in business and government. Let's get now context of this raid from business editor Devon Morrigan. Devon, what is the latest? Yeah, you're quite right. I mean, that tweet coming out uh, late this afternoon or yesterday afternoon from the Reserve Bank that it has indeed secured a court order to attach the assets of uh, Marcus Huster, the uh, former Steinhoff uh, CEO. But uh, I want to bring in Christo Visa, who served as the chair of Steinhoff's supervisory board. That was between May 2016 and December 2017. And really, Christo Visa, the driving force in the success stories of Pep and ShopRite, his shares in Steinhoff lost more than 95% of their value after that corporate fraud was uncovered. He has so, since sold his entire holding in the company. Well, let's just chat to him now. Uh, Christo Visa, thanks very much indeed for talking to us this morning. Were you surprised by the Reserve Bank's attachment when the news came out yesterday? I see you called it earlier an unexpected intervention. Were you surprised? No, I was not surprised uh, uh, because, you know, unlike uh, the perpetrators amongst, you know, Euster, uh, and many other people uh, believed that they would not have to account for what they'd done. Uh, but I always knew sooner or later, you know, the wheels of justice turn and uh, that they will be brought to account. What is interesting is that the first serious move in this regard was made uh, by the Reserve Bank. You know, and the Reserve Bank has very substantial powers. Um, so, sorry, this thing has gone on low battery. Can you hear me, Devin? All is clear. You can go ahead, Mr. Visa. Okay, well, I, I notice here's a low power mode uh, on this uh, computer. Yeah, no, so I, I wasn't surprised uh, because, you know, in time, uh, the full story will unfold. But, you know, the, this move only revolves around the contravention of exchange controls, doesn't it? I mean, is it a start? Because many would want to know just how serious the pursuit of Euster is, not just from the National Prosecuting Authority, but from Steinhoff itself. No, I think it's very serious. Uh, you know, I've pointed out several times that people criticize our National Prosecuting Authority for the long delay in arresting U.S. and the other perpetrators. But the fact of the matter was that in Germany, the authorities there started looking at U.S. Uh, alleged misdeeds already in 2015. And they haven't yet successfully prosecuted anyone to the best of my knowledge. Uh, while we're on this subject, you know, people often criticize the board of Steinhoff, of which I was a member and a chairman for a short while. But the fact is when, when those rumors surfaced in Germany, the board of Steinhoff appointed one of the most prominent forensic investigation firms in Germany. Mm to look at all the allegations, to investigate it properly, forensically, and they, until the very last day in 2017, still held the view that nothing wrong had been done. So even they, doing a forensic investigation, clearly were duped. Yeah, I mean... You, you're suing uh, Mr. Joster and the uh, Lanzarek Estate Investments, a company that bought the estate from you in 2012. How do you feel when you look That's back good. on that deal? No, well, I mean, obviously it's pretty heartbreaking because it's a beautiful property. And, uh, you know, I sold it to Joster in exchange for Steinhoff shares, which are worthless. And which at the time, as the evidence now emerges, was worthless at the time. So uh, obviously I am, to put it mildly, quite upset by, uh, you know, the way that I was defrauded also in that transaction. Mm.
And, and the losses are tragic, aren't they, Mr. Visa? I mean, you've gotten back a Pardon? fraction of what I'm saying. The losses really yes. were tragic, weren't they, Mr. Visa? Because you've gotten yeah, look, back just a fraction of what you lost. I mean, how do you assess it in terms of its entire damage? Well, you know, the numbers are I lost uh, about 60 billion rand. And uh, I mean, it's public knowledge. I got back 8 billion rand. So that is an enormous loss. But if you look at the bigger picture, South African shareholders lost, including myself, lost over a hundred billion rand, much more than a hundred billion. I mean, I did know the number, somewhere in the range of 120, 130 billion rand. And here is the irony. The perpetrators, uh, apart from any money that they may or may not have stolen, uh, had very little of that loss because that, those assets today belong to overseas banks and hedge funds. South Africans lost it and those people are sitting with the assets. Those assets, only the PEPCOR assets at the time were worth uh, 60 billion rand, it's now worth well over 100 billion rand. So it caused also huge damage to, you know, the body of South African shareholders. So that if this is a seed that's been planted now by the Reserve Bank's attachments, I mean, how far do you think it would go to reconcile that? It seems that we're miles away from, you know, the real recuperation, isn't it? Well, I, I think we must accept that this will be a very long, drawn-out affair, regrettably. Uh, you know, it took almost five years for the various creditors to reach a settlement. And we must assume that the perpetrators will, as it is now commonly called, also in all probability employ the Stalingrad defense. They will roll every potential boulder in the way of a successful prosecution that they can. But ultimately, they know they will not succeed. Mm. Let, let's they just, can, you know. Yeah, uh, excuse me for a second. Let's just take a few steps back. I mean, let's look at the context at the moment now, you know, where uh, we get South Africa pursuing this uh, uh, attempt to get off the grey listing uh, from the Financial Action Task Force, right? This push, yes. is, is this what's needed to follow up on the broader private sector, what they are doing? Because it doesn't end with Marcus Eurster, does it? Sure, sure. No, sure. I mean, we, we are all, maybe not with direct proof, but we are aware that, uh, you know, the Guptas, for instance, what they got away with in terms of not only stealing, but uh, externalizing the funds is just horrendous. Uh, but today, looking back, we all know that with rare exceptions, our regulators and people who had to, to be the watchdogs were all hollowed out, as the expression goes. But that, again, is changing. And therefore, you know, we can expect, as we see, you know, the Guptas are currently sitting in jail in Dubai. And uh, Mr. Eurster, as one of my friends said, now has to sleep in a tent. Yeah. And uh, just as I let you go, uh, Mr. Christophe, so I mean, the reason I asked you that as to whether or not you're far, you would you would expect that you'd get this uncovering across the private sector because you said yourself in previous interviews that when you were first confronted with this news of market yester you looked at some of those points against him and, and actually put it forward to him and said look is is this really the case uh, because things like this unfold sure. with very little people knowing what's going on absolutely i mean you know i i've i've said this a million times as well devon you know people ascribe some culpability to the board of Steinhoff over the years. The fact of the matter is, these fraudsters managed to get past the internal auditors, 
the statutory auditors, the largest firm or one of the largest firms of auditors in the world, they got past the regulators, they got past the banks who lent them billions of rands, they got past the ratings agencies. So this, and as I explained to you, even this forensic uh, firm of accountants, lawyers, they got past them when you know, the allegations were put on the table and needed to be investigated. They still came back and gave Eusta and his cohorts a clean bill of health. So, yeah, that, that just shows you how sophisticated this fraud that had been perpetrated on the current evidence for a period of over 15 years, how sophisticated it was. Mm. Oh, well, thanks very much indeed for uh, that reaction and context there, uh, Mr. Christoviso. Thanks indeed for chatting to us. Well, that's uh, where we leave it for now, Fundo.